Father, I pray that those who hear this brief message shall never be the same again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello. This is Roy Olson talking to you from the beautiful courtyard in Apavia with the lovely swing behind me here. You see it? Swing. And I uh, wanted to talk to you today a little bit about what it means to be waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was on my way to New York with a group and uh, a preacher man was behind the steering wheel and I was riding shotgun and um, he said to me, Jesus can come at any moment. We need to be ready at any moment. I said, to him, no, he can't. He looked at me shocked. He says, what do you mean, no, he can't? I said, well, you have uh, set so many things up that need to happen before Jesus comes that have not happened yet. So how can we say Jesus will come at any moment when all the things you said have to happen before he comes haven't happened yet? I don't know if he got the idea or not, but uh, we have many thoughts about how Jesus is coming back again. But I remember reading in, in scripture that uh, Jesus referring to the coming of the Holy Spirit said, I will not leave you comfortless, but here it is, I will come to you. Was not Jesus saying there that his imminent return was indeed his coming to us in the person of the Holy Spirit? We read elsewhere that one of the jobs or responsibilities or pleasures of God the Holy Spirit is to manifest or reveal or speak of, or show to us the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the apostle talks about uh, he comes, who? Jesus Christ. He comes to be glorified in the saints and admired in them that believe. And he also said, you know, I labor in travail that Christ be formed in you. Is not that a coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to his people if Christ is being formed in us? Now the word formed indicates a, a process, an ongoing process of growth. Uh, we could compare it to the gestation period of a human woman who from the period of conception to the period of birth, there is a child being formed within the womb of the mother. And perhaps the Apostle Paul was referring to that where he, he uses the word I, tra word, I travail. That certainly is a word that is used in uh, childbirth. And uh, I travail in prayer for you that Christ be formed in us. And so the thought comes to me, why are we looking to the clouds, looking to a mountain, looking for an appearance of Jesus Christ, a kind of descending down from the heavens, which is somehow incomprehensible. What do I mean by that? Well, down has to do with Earth's gravity. Whenever you are headed in the direction of the force of gravity that is down. Now down to American may mean in the opposite direction of down for a person living on the exact 
other side of the globe where down to him is headed towards the a gravitational force of the earth so they're coming from two different directions both headed from their perspective down and yet neither of them is uh, ultimately heading down they're heading in the direction of the pull of gravity it seems to me that Jesus Christ being formed in us being glorified in the saints and admired in them that believed has to do with a revelation, a manifestation of Jesus Christ, something of the order that the Apostle Paul referred to where he says, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. There is a manifestation, a revelation, a uh, formation of Christ within his believers that they are not glorified but Christ is glorified in them and uh, admired Christ is admired because he has been formed within believers now question we uh, uh, often comes to our mind is uh, Peter's uh, uh, speaking about hastening uh, the day of the Lord, hastening it. In other words, there are things that we can do so that uh, the return of Jesus Christ will be hastened. Well, what is that? Well, he's constantly talking about allowing Christ to dwell within us. But Jesus said, He that loveth me will keep my commandments. And he that loveth me, I will manifest myself to him, and my Father will manifest himself, and we will make our abode within him. Jesus constantly was referring to a, a coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not necessarily to the religious community or to the church at large, but to individuals. I uh, re remember an Old Testament man, he said, he was not, for God took him because he walked with God. Elijah certainly had a manifestation of Christ in him uh, in a pre-incarnate way, whereby God just took him. And the battle over the body of Moses, the question is, you know, there was a contention between Michael and the devil over the body of Moses, and I just asked, well, when did that contestation, contestation take place? After the, uh, Moses had been died and buried by God, or while he was living? I don't think uh, for naught that the Bible says that his natural force was not abated, nor his eye uh, did not wax dim. Why? There was a victory. There was a manifestation of the power of God within the living body of Moses. There is a whole vast arena that remains unexplored. And uh, in uh, reading some books and biographies, I realize that there are those who have entered in. Perhaps not fully, but at least partially, they've entered in. And certainly, that's what we want to do. The kingdom of heaven is not of this world. The kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness a right standing before God, peace, true tranquility of soul and spirit, like having in, entered into rest, righteousness, peace, and then joy. Not necessarily the kind of joy that uh, manifests itself in laughter, but that beautiful expression, experience of joy through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just thoughts I wanted to share with you today. And uh, 
let me know what you think. God bless you, and uh, we'll continue this at another time. Unto him who hath loved us and washed us from sin, unto him be the glory forever.